So you sell the job. You're at the door. You get a signature. A lot of people in this industry think they're really badass because they get a signature. That's the easiest part of this job. Don't get me wrong. You're not going to sign every deal you go to. But, you know, if I go out on a good door knocking day, I'm going to get 10 signatures, right? Mm -hmm. That's when the real work starts. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Blue Collar Boardroom. In this episode, you're going to hear from RRCA's top volume sales rep. He's also uh, a Dennis the Menace. He is a problem child, but as I like to say, he's a good problem to have. And if any of you know about multi-million dollar producers, they are a special breed. Some of them, I heard a story of somebody say there's three different types of salespeople. You got your racehorses, you got your, well, you know what? We're going to go into detail a little bit more in the episode. Look, what you need to do is subscribe, hit the bell, get notifications, because inside of this boardroom, roofing salespeople, contracting salespeople, door-to-door salespeople, they learn how to scale their business and maximize their life. So look, here's the episode with Jeremy Johnson. Let's get this thing started. What's up, my man? How's it going, Lee? Hey, you remember the first day we met? First day, probably just in the office. Yeah, I wasn't thinking too much about you, but I was, so I, was I, I knew that you had some potential. How'd you hear about roofing? Well, to get into my roofing story, I'll give you a little bit about my background. Uh, I'm from Indiana. I moved down uh, just after Irma. Had nothing to do with any kind of storm. My hands are very, very uh, not dirty. And um, I kind of came down to retire, honestly, a little bit. Raised my family, slow life down a little bit. I own a company up in Indianapolis. And uh, I just saw a chance to get away. Uh, Our home was at a max value. We sold, made a bunch of money, came down. Bought a house. I chilled for about a year and a half, played played a bunch of pickleball. Then my wife said, uh, go get another fucking job. <laughs> you were driving her crazy. <laughs> now you're driving us crazy. But like I said, he's a good problem to have. This year's stats are, what are your stats? Well, you know, the year's not over yet. Okay. 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 So, Just tell us where you, you are. Know, I'm probably going to be end up around uh, 6 million sold and collected. Mm-hmm. You know, you can sell it as much as you want. What you build and collect is what, what's important in this business. What do you think about all these other chafes on the internet talking about these big numbers? You know some of them. Yeah. Different yeah. companies. How do they count their numbers? Uh, you know, probably about what the, they sign on a contract. Yeah. You know, uh, when I first um, got into this business and, and I used to bring a contract to the office every day, I thought I was big shit signing contracts. And I'd bring them in and I'd be hunting for some recognition. You know, recognition. I'd want you, somebody, you, yeah. David Kelly at the point, I think it was, to, man, give me some cred. Give me, you know, I want my name yeah. on something. Yeah. I didn't realize for until months, months later that that signature is, doesn't mean anything. It's not about what you sell. It's about what you collect. Yeah, and what you know, it's about what you get approved by the insurance company. This is a – if it was super easy just to go sign sign and drive, everybody would do it, and everybody would be making as much money as I am. Well, we're going to get into some controversy because you were around when there was a changing of the guard. We were clearing some of the old air, and there were some good sales guys that had to be phased out because they didn't quite align with what we're doing. We took a lot of heat from it. Um, but – you know, one of the coolest things about your entry into this business was your first job. <laughs> I've never seen some shit like this. Tell them that story. First job, um, big neighborhood. You know, I got a pretty good foot in the door. My mother-in-law lived in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and first job, you know, and it was an approval. It wasn't a, didn't go through legal, got approved right off the bat. And after supplementation, it was a $300,000 job. The roof, uh, you know, I think, I, I, regardless of how much the roof costs, I know that we, the company made one hundred sixty-two thousand, and my cut was eighty-one thousand dollars. So my first check I got, eighty-one grand. That oh, was man. probably like five months into the in the business. Now those results are not typical. Um, obviously, God was working in your favor. You had a little good energy, um, but you know, walk me through like where you come from. Uh, my dad was a car salesman. You said you're you're a car salesman. Yep. And uh, you had some challenges with your own business as well. Yeah, I, did, I was in the car business for 10 years in Indianapolis. And, uh, you know, used car business brings used, used problems, you know. And so every every time you, you have a roof, you got a problem, right? You got somebody that's going to call you about a warranty or going to call you about something. Same thing with a used car. You're always going to get a problem with every every deal just about. Um, you, you know, you, while you have thousands of people that are happy, you have three that are pissed off that make the most noise. So, you know, I just got tired of that, that retail life and just people – coming back and running your name for the dirt for the one person that you didn't, you bent over backwards for the most 
that would be the quickest one to throw you under the bus. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I kind of was transitioning my way out of the car business when Mm -hmm. I came down here um, and got into something different. But it allowed me to kind of be away from... It's a really fluffy way to say you got your ass kicked a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) I did. You know, I lost a bunch of money. Um, (laughs) it, It worked out in the end. But, yeah, so when I came down here... You know, I my wife told me go get another job. She wasn't cool with her going to work every day and me staying at home playing pickleball. Right. And um, I called the thing off. I like, I think I saw you on the internet, like everybody else. I saw you on Facebook. Oh, really? Yep. Saw me? I saw you on Facebook. Oh, shit. And then hey, I, if you're watching this, you can be working with me, too. I correlated that roofing thing with all the roofing trucks I saw on my street because mm-hmm. I live in a tile neighborhood. It was after Irma. And I saw those nice trucks, and I was like, well, let me just see what, what this is all about. And I called, and I think Jared Rand answered the phone. And smooth-talking guy, sound like he knew had his stuff together, and invited me to come down, fill out an application. I came to the office. And the first day I went out with him, hell no. I'm not doing this shit. I'm not knocking no doors for $200 and then giving you the big check. No way. You know, I knew that I would be good at it, but at the same time, I, w- I didn't want to be good at it for that price. Mm-hmm. So um, I had no plans of coming back the next day. But something inside me said, let me, let me just see what I can do first. I can't tell him, hey, I'm not going to do this for no $200 without proving to myself I could do it first. So I went out and got 10, 10 contracts signed, probably an average of about 70 grand a contract, right? Then I came and said, hey, I like this job, but I'm not doing it for 200 as a signature. I want, <laughs> I want to be a goddamn, I want to be a sales rep where I'm, a, I'm paid like I'm what I'm worth. So they put me into a different program. I wasn't a door knocker very quickly. I was more of a project manager. But I went through your ding, start at the bottom to the top. Every penny is that first million. You know, some of the rising stars in this company moved through it a little faster than I did. So talk about the meritocracy culture and what you wanted to do to get to rise to the top. Because you had to come into this community and this sales environment and think, man, I could take these guys. So, you know, I came in two and a half years after Irma Mm -hmm. where all these guys were fat hogs sitting around, a bunch of new trucks, a bunch of money coming in every week because they had the, the... Beautiful, the most beautiful storm in history of roofing, Hurricane Irma. And they're sitting there with big smiles. I'm like, yeah, I want to be like these guys. But, man, all the good roofs were taken. All the the easy jobs were gone. So I had to pick up the scraps. And, you know, I, me living in a big tile neighborhood, my mother-in-law living in a tile, tile neighborhood, gave me a good start. But I know one thing that pissed me off and drove me was you saying, you saying, uh, oh, he's just selling all his friends and family. <laughs> I still sticks with me to this day. I was like, I'll show you, mother. I'll show you. So you just know. goes to show you that racehorses, like I talked about the three different types of salespeople. Jeremy's a racehorse. You got your racehorses that all you gotta do is smack them on the ass and they'll like run, run, run to the moon. And then you got, I'll say, uh, donkeys. Actually, donkeys are what Jesus went and rode into Nazareth on. They're consistent. They put one foot in up front of another. They could go up a complete mountain. They can carry a lot of stuff on their back, right? Then you got your mules, and your mules are like, if you get up on them, you got to smack them. You got to smack them to get them up, just to beat the shit out of them to get them to go. Um, one way to really inspire a racehorse like me or Jeremy is to say you can't do it. No, nah, I don't think you can do it. So making this culture where people have to prove themselves, a meritocracy, it's like earning your spot on a football team. And uh, it's about learning how to become the TRD. What's the TRD? The real deal. TRFD, I like to Cha-ching. call it. Real fucking deal, motherfucker. Yeah. So you sell the job. You're at the door. You get a signature. A lot of people in this industry think they're really badass because they get a signature. That's the easiest part of this job. Don't get me wrong. You're not going to sign every deal you go to. But, you know, if I go out on a good door knocking day, I'm going to get 10 signatures, right? Mm-hmm. That's when the real work starts. That's when you got to get your estimates. You got to get your photo reports. You got to get your, you know, your signed documents. Get them all into your CRM, whatever that might, may be. That's when the real work starts. You get a home at night after a ten day, eight to ten hour a day of knocking doors. That's when the real work starts. And that's when you got to log in and exact it for about forty five minutes. Everyone you, you start you start up. That's when you got to edit your photo reports, all your circles and arrows. That takes time, you know. So I tell everybody, that especially if they've, if they've trained under me or have ran with me about on a, on a street. Good job. I'm proud of you. I am. I'll be the first one to congratulate you on a signature. But now here's where the work starts. Mm. So I tend not to. 
some of my secrets is I don't door knock on back to back days mm. because you'll leave some people behind. Mm. If you sign 10 and you go door knock and sign 10 more the next day, mm. you're going to lose five of those first 10. No, what you like to do is you like to complete the offer and then go back the next day and close. Yes. So talk to them about, because now we're into it and people want to know what's your sales method. And, you know, we use the completed offer to close, and a lot of people are afraid to do that. Explain to you how you use the completed offer to close the hard ones and what's your closing percentage? How is it so high? So, you know, after I get somebody, uh, interest really peaked and, you know, some people will be with me. Hey, man, that guy would have signed. He would have signed whatever you wanted. That's okay. So I go there. I, I, I give him a whole spiel of what RCA can do for you. You know, we're not two chucks in a truck. I can drive this whole claim for you. I know the insurance industry like the back of my hand. You, you don't have to worry about anything but picking a color. You know, a lot of people like that stress relief. Like, oh, you know how to run the insurance? Okay, just take it. You know, so I take that relief off of them. And then when I come back, I come back with an estimate, a photo report, and th they'll sign whatever I want. Hold on. That's right. He gives them an estimate. Now, what, what does that do for them whenever, does it confuse them? Does it mess them up? I mean, a lot of roofers or contractors are afraid to give them an estimate. It, it puts a real number in their head. Whether, and, I, and one of the first things I say, hey, I know don't get sticker shocked. This estimate is strictly to hold the insurance company to a standard. Mm -hmm. This we're the Mercedes Benz of roofing companies. Mm -hmm. This is the Mercedes Benz price. But I tell you what, if that insurance company only pays for a Chevy, we're going to still give you a Mercedes Benz product, right? So no matter what, we, we don't get to dictate the pricing at the end of the day. The insurance company does. Would you agree with that? Yes, sir. But we can give them an estimate to give them our standards, or give them our expectations. What do you think it does when people say they don't want to give them an estimate? I think that it, that it looks like you're hiding something. It does. It looks you look less professional. I think so as well. So in my sales process, step three is to invest into the client. And the law of reciprocity is, is that if you do something for somebody, they'll do it back. What percentage do you close? I probably close uh, around 90%. And I would have to say if he's door knocking cold traffic, it may be a little less than that, but I'm a witness. <laughs> you give him leads, you get going in an area where he's built roofs, and really, I mean, we did a little door-to-door -door competition. You can count on him for one deal an hour, maybe two deals an hour when he's hot. Yeah. But me and him can go in the streets and manifest a signed contingency, walk out any given moment, and within an hour get a deal. And so, but it's not just about going and getting eight deals. What's it about? It's about the whole process of being the real deal. Door knock is an important skill. Mm -hmm. I think you could put me up against any door knocker in the country. I and agree. I'm going to hold my own. Taylor, if you're listening, hit me up. We'll go on through that one time. Um, it's, it's a skill. It's a, you got to have people's skills. you got to uh, grab people's attention right away. Plenty of, of good things to say about good door knockers. They're, they're invaluable. Mm -hmm. But you have to be a, a project manager and to, to really close home a deal, you got to know the product. you got to know the, the, the whole system. And you got to be able to present an offer to the customer. And, and by doing so, you, you, you might not win. They might have had that same spiel to them three different times and somebody beat you at a lower price. Mm. And I say, yeah, you can go for a lower price, but at the end of the day, we're, the insurance company is going to pay what the insurance company pays. Mm. That you, if you go over a lower price, you're going to go for a lower standard roof. What on that price are they missing on my estimate? Mm. There's something missing because we, we use the same computer software. right? Oh, these are great things. And this is how we teach people to sell using a completed offer, how we teach people how to sell value. Like you're getting a Mercedes Benz, but our guarantee is it doesn't cost more than what the insurance allows. So um, we're going to get more into the sales process, but I got to get into the meat and potatoes. <laughs> Jeremy is Mr. Controversy at our RCA. So now I got to start peeling back the onion and, and create a little uncomfortableness in the room, okay? Okay. What happened when uh, you tried to fight me? Well, it started off with a fight with uh, Jared. Your, your, was it your? How long had you been working with us? It wasn't very long. It was probably <laughs> uh, I don't know, six months, seven okay. months. And you, you were a new up and comer. Where were we? Manager meeting. <laughs> um, it started with a little beef with Jared, which, which I don't know if you know this or not, but me and Jared are good friends now. Good. We yeah. are. We're really good friends. That's good. And I don't know even what this beef was about, but I, there was a couple of drinks had on a fishing trip. And uh, I don't know, Jared said something, I said something, and next thing you know, Jared got thrown in the ocean. And you got all mad, came running at me because that was your family. And Luckily, uh, luckily we didn't beat each other up. 
Yeah, and nobody went to jail. Nobody died in that movie. No, cooler heads uh, prevailed. But you know, I come to find out, that's really rare for Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> I come to find uh, out most of the time he's not so reserved. Maybe you were maybe you were a little scared of me. I was no, I was not scared. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, if I beat up the owner, I'm not gonna definitely not gonna have a job tomorrow. <laughs> maybe I just beat up his kid brother and I'd be fine. <laughs> no, so, you know, no, it's all good. We I had a lot. Of, you, we had man. a lot of drink, and I have a lot of respect for you. And we we were all just trying to get to know each other. And you got into this roofing business kind of crazy, a lot of freedom. You chased your first storm out away from family after you had a lot of success, and you had to learn some lessons. A lot of young guys learn. A lot of guys that aren't so young learn. Yeah. <laughs> I've gone, even last time, my wife's like, you got disconnected. Were you out to dinner every night? You know, So being on the road, it leads to a certain lifestyle. We talk about the negative of that lifestyle. We're of a personal development core value. Right. And I think you're doing better. Oh, yeah. But that's not saying. Oh, no, I had my lumps. You know, you, you, it's like going on spring break at first time. <laughs> <laughs> Going on spring break your first time away from your parents, uh, you know there's there's women, there's booze, uh, whatever, you, there, anything you want probably, you know. So I, I I didn't do anything with women. I'm getting a little overweight, but uh, we went out, we partied every night. You know, we were making a bunch of money, we, a bunch of guys. We did testosterone. We're gonna go out to the bars. We're gonna do whatever we want. There's no wife that tells us what to do. Whoa! You know what I'm saying? We yeah. sold seven deals. At, let's go celebrate. It's a pirate boys club. Isn't Woo! It? It's like a big fraternity house, man. It Nobody's is. doing laundry, is sleeping on air mattresses. It's, but you know, uh, you true, love it, don't you? I did love it. You know, I loved it. <laughs> After a while, I got old. You know, and yeah. true stormers, you know, the, there's there's a little bit out in you. You know, you, you get into a storm and it takes a while to get settled down. And well, those are the days when I was, you know, 22 to 25. <laughs> but uh, I got put in jail a few times myself. Yeah. Um. Here's the deal. Recently, we had a problem. You almost got burnt to the ground. Oh, yeah. How, Man, did, that, how, how did that happen? How did our uh, competitor come take a, a, a picture of that? Oh, my God. Now on the internet, you're not. Right on the internet with RC on the side, burnt to the ground. Oh, my God. Dang. We got haters. We got a lot of haters. So my truck got burnt till crisp. Another guy's got burnt pretty much, too. There's two salesmen that lost their truck. Uh Crazy situation with some tarpers, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tarps Mahoney burnt your bro, truck. to the ground, man. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? The, uh. Dustin Johnson said the New Orleans locals walk up to him and said, what the fuck is wrong with these Florida boys? Bro, we got so much street cred out of that. We live in a terrible neighborhood, man. <laughs> Nobody comes within 100 yards of our house now. I heard someone got shot with an AK. Yes, about 150 yards from our house. We heard boom, 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 boom. We walk outside like some idiots. They're supposed to hide. We all walk outside like some Florida hillbillies. Like, what's going on? This is my dad right in the street. Rest in peace. Yeah, it was crazy. Well, eye opening. Um, so this New Orleans storm. <laughs> let's talk about the book of business, the storm. Anyone that's thinking about New Orleans, you know, coming to the end of the year in a lot of places. You know, you're always about working the best storm. You yeah, know, I've tried to hold you back before. Don't go there. Don't go there. Mm -hmm. You go anyways. Yeah. Tell them what you did this year, running around like a. Yeah, so you know. And how do you keep up with all of it? Because that's another thing. A lot of people go out of sight, out of mind. You're you're able to do a massive amount of volume. Now you tell them about the support you get from our RCA, but people give you a hard time about some customer complaints, and they just don't understand. More money, more problems. More volume, you're gonna have more issues. But I don't think the the percentage of people that you have. You know, you can't be threatening no customers. Not, not anymore. You can't be trying to beat customers up. Not anymore. Uh, so, you know, like I told you back, the percentages of the car business. If you have a 1,000 <laughs> happy people, you're going to have 10 or 12 unhappy people. Same thing in the roofing business. Hey, one time my dad got arrested, and there was this guy that kept trying to come back for a better price. And he talks like this. He, he was like this, and he talked like this, and he was looking for, like, a very good bid, like a very good bid. I need another bid, a cheaper price. And my dad took him by the neck, and he said... He said, sir, he said, what's your best price inside the door? What's your best price outside the door? My dad said, hey, bro, here's my best price outside the door. Here's my best price inside the door. And started WWE taking this fool's <laughs> neck back and forth out of the car door. Car still, he got arrested. But well, that was before, that, that, I just was told that story. In all fairness, most of my aggressive stuff towards customers was before the customer care team. All right. 
That was when you were we were collecting our own money. And we were collecting our own money. You never said there was limitations. I did too. <laughs> well, I didn't follow them. You know, I wanted to get paid. So nobody died or was assaulted. Nobody was, or, no. I didn't actually show up and beat them in front of their family. Oh, God, Jeremy. You got to stop that. You got to stop that, bro. So now I got a customer care team that was a little bit of buffer between me and my customers. Don't get me wrong. Most of my customers, 95, 8% of my customers love me to death. I'll tell you what. 80, 75, 65. 98. All right. So I'll tell you what. I, here's a testament to my customer satisfaction. After two months in a storm, any storm, I don't knock another door. I That's don't have true. to. I don't have to knock another door. It's all referrals. Two months of hard door knocking. The rest is referrals. I'm still getting referrals about on a pace of three to five a week from Hurricane This is where Sally. I got to stand up because Charlie built your jobs. He stood up for you as far as your quality. Tyrone stood up for you. You got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. Yeah. Sometimes you got to know when to fold them. Sometimes you got to walk away. Sometimes, like a lot of times when you really need to think about it, you need to just walk away. Yeah. Like when old, I called you right after old douchebag ran up on me on the streets and tried to tempt me to go fight him on the side of the road. Thank God. Yeah. You weren't in the car with me. Gotta be, yeah. Because <laughs> we would have not we, walked away. We would have had a bond. <laughs> we we would have not walked away. We would have had a bond. All right. So that being said, um, the secrets of running a book of business over multiple locations. You sold $6 million this year. That's your goal. How, where did you sell it? Talk about the benefit of RRCA offering a book of business all across multiple locations. So the last little bit of Orlando pushed out uh, from a hailstorm last summer, mm -hmm. beginning of last summer, and then Hurricane Sally into Pensacola. Well, um, I got a little complacent in P Pensacola. I had all my jobs on hook. I was running with a guy in RRCA. I was putting jobs with, so we had this unlock. So I went up to Indianapolis for a hailstorm, and I went over to Iowa for a hailstorm. So I'm, now I'm running. Plus, I have all my deals in Naples. I'm building a, two jobs a week in Naples mm -hmm. on a consistent basis. Uh, so I got two jobs a week in Pensacola, one job a week in Orlando, two jobs a week in Naples, building all at the same time. Sometimes I have three or four jobs building a day in four different locations. Mm -hmm. And without good customer care team, uh, a partner that usually helps me, I usually take on one partner per storm, and I'll split all my jobs with them. Mm -hmm. I'll do most of the selling. Mm -hmm. I'll be the, the face. They'll be the, all the back end stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind splitting the money with them because that's good ca customer satisfaction. Good customer satisfaction equals referrals. Right, like I said, a couple of months of door knocking, six weeks of door knocking, your referrals come in more than you can handle. I'm still getting three to five referrals a week in Pensacola. That storm was a year ago. So, you know, once you get that developed, a book is like a your own little business, right? Mm -hmm. As a project manager, your own little business. So, how you run that is keeping your customers happy. Make sure you're there, do what you say, you do integrity. You know, I do have my faults, but I, if there's one thing I hold my hat on is doing what I say I'm going to do. Some people not, might not like that, you know, but and they might not like what I have to say that I'm going to do, but I do do it. And my customers will tell you that, and they can say a lot of stuff about me. But well, over two and a half years, I mean, the track record of happy customers and capped out jobs, you can't get the most capped out jobs. People that can't cap out jobs, what, what do they do? They quit. They fucking quit. They quit. And they go out and blame other people. Yeah. They say, I can't do this. It was this guy's fault. I mean, you've seen them come through, and a lot of these end up being knuckleheads talking shit on the internet. But you got the number one amount of cap outs in the company. And so what do you think the key to capping jobs out is? Um, what is a cap out? Finish, a cap out is when you sell the job, you build the job, and you collect every penny. And you go, hey, RRCA, I'm trying to get paid now. Yeah, It's yeah. time to get By paid. By the way, how much have I paid you this year? I'm um, a little over 500 grand for the year. Damn. But I got some big cap outs coming, so hold that checkbook tight. Okay. Um, I got a big old check coming next week. Nice. About 46 grand Nice. next week, so... Doesn't sound like a Ponzi scheme to me. No, 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 no Ponzi scheme over here. Um, yeah, I, the, the financial benefits are great. You know, I have a lot of time away from my family. Um, I come back every weekend. My son's in baseball, so. But, I, you know, this is something I, I'm still learning. I'm only two, like you said, two and a half years in. Um, once I get this down to a science, I won't have to be away from my family so much. But, no. I mean, I'm still going to chase a storm a year. Yeah. I, I, nothing would be greater than another storm right here in southwest Florida. Right. But, Every storm, I learn something new. I get a little bit better at my craft, a little bit better as the, at this career. Well, what I like about what you're doing is you're moving toward advancement so fast. And what people don't realize is that when they're not growing, they're dying. But the best value they have is their skill set, their ability to do storms, build book of businesses, to duplicate. 
And you're learning how to duplicate through building a team and even having the team build your jobs within my company and realizing that you have you know, a supplement, a person to bill your insurance files to follow up on your insurance company and the customer care team. Um, how does that allow you to keep just selling? So, you know, I've kind of hooked up with a particular person in uh, in the customer care team. Shout out, Nicole. Um, so she collects every one of my jobs. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Hallelujah, Nicole. Way we, to go. We talk for about 30 minutes every day. Who Beautiful. Are we, who are we collecting today? Where are is we my, collecting, Nicole? Where is my money today? Yeah, know, I love that conversation. Know, where is my money today? So, you know, we'll get a list of seven to ten people that we need to call or follow up on, whether that be an insurance company or an actual client. Um and nowhere in the process where all our jobs are. You know, there's problem jobs, there's big jobs at every different stage along the way. So we, we're on the same page with the customer care team about knowing where all my jobs are at. And, and she can call from a local center to anywhere that I've sold jobs. And then also she corresponds with the different project managers that I work with. And as a team, we, we make sure everybody's taken care of. We make sure the jobs are built right. We make sure that somebody's there during the build. We make sure somebody's there with the, to, to collect the check. We make sure the supplements are in properly. What about mortgage checks? Mortgage checks are signed at the beginning and sent off. You know, most of the time it's a lot easier just to send it to RRC and let them deal with it. Mm -hmm. You let the customer deal with it, they get it sent back three or four, five times. That money's just holding up. You get a mortgage affidavit and then Jessica. Yeah, well, I just I have the customer fill out the mortgage affidavit. There's just a couple things on there that are very important that the, that the customer uh, support team needs, like this last four of your social and the mortgage number. As long as you get those few things and send it to them, the rest is self-explanatory. And... They, they will expedite that process faster than anybody can do it. Faster than the homeowner. And faster. Then, what's your time worth if you're not doing that stuff? I mean, it lets me do what I'm best at. And if you're making one to two deals an hour, you're making, I mean, you're not just selling small deals now. No. The, the thing I like about this industry is it's, um, your income is a little bit farther ahead of you. So I could literally stop doing my job right now and I'll be making money for a couple of years, mm -hmm. maybe three years, I'd say. Mm hmm. I have that many jobs lined out. So as long as you keep grinding, that's one thing that I don't think it's... No, it's a history. There's a lot of roofers. They go through an up and down cycle. It's feast or famine. And they're not really willing, the definition of entrepreneur that your best friend Jason says, <laughs> is he says um, that you know an entrepreneur does things now. He lives like others won't now, so he can live like others won't later. And the thing that you do is you keep prospecting. You keep 10Xing the amount of offers you complete. You keep trying to get better. Now, the one area we're going to get even better at is going after commercial, going after um, – we got a whole book of business of a high-end residential tile roofs in New Orleans. Um, obviously, uh, that area is ripe with a lot of opportunity. And if you want to come learn Jeremy's system, it's best to ride in a truck with him. Um, I never turn it down. He, that. he would mentor you and – let me tell you something. He's a good guy. He's out there working. He's working hard. We've given him a hard time and said some rough stories. But that crazy Tarper dude was literally in and out of our lives. We, he was just a random person that came at the beginning of the storm. We were trying to help him. But he went out, got drunk off Everclear, came back to the house. You were sleeping. I didn't even go out that night. Yeah. Didn't even go out. Dude uh, was mad that he got locked out, was fighting, and burnt uh, a car down. To, to And it was crazy. I mean, look, here's the deal. Roof life is a lot crazier a week after the hurricane than it is after things settle out. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. things have settled out down there. And uh, we have housing. We got leads. We got two different offices. And we're looking for top performing roofing salespeople from all over the country. And so um, if that's you, um, make sure that you find us on Instagram, on Facebook, and hit us up. You can go to joinleehate.com. But um, talk to them a little bit about um, what it's like to really work at RRCA. I mean, um, You've got accounting, you've got management, there is some corporate bureaucracy, but why do you, why do you, you, you could go run your own company, you could go work for another large company, or you could work for a small company. Why do you, because you've seen it all this yeah. year. Yeah, so, you know, Lee knows, I, I went and I tried to test the waters during a hailstorm that we decided not to go to. I was open and honest with you, today. hey, I'm going to go run this hailstorm in my hometown. It didn't hit in the state where I was from. It didn't hit in the city where I was from. It hit in the community I was from, so I had to go. Mm -hmm. And we decided not to go there, and I, that was okay, and you knew I went, and, and it was fine. It was just another learning experience I could add to my tool belt. And uh, so I choose to stay with RRCA because they make the process easier, Right. They make it, they, they simplify it. You know, they let me do what I'm good at, which is selling, building, and collecting. And I get a little help along the way. Like, I don't want to 
have to chase down the number of a mortgage company? LoneStarInc.com Mortgage 300. I don't know where to look that up at. So I send it to the customer care team and they take care of it. And they're happy to do that for me because they know what I'm good at and they know what they're good at, right? So those are the little things that the burdens that smaller company wouldn't take care of. Talk and about it, building and production and different types of roofs. Yeah, so at RCA, we, we do, can do everything. You know, this is a, one of the companies that, that does everything. You know, there's some bigger ones that have the three-letter word that only do a certain type of roof, and they're bad at everything else. And, and this company, I've built probably three-to-one uh, shingle to tile, but we're just as good as either. We're the best in the business at tile, but we're damn good at shingle, too. Stone want, cut and steel metal. Stone cut and steel. Do you want TPO? We got a warehouse full of P TPO in, in Pensacola right now. If you need some, need some material, hit us up. But I'm going to give you a little, little bit of insight on, you said, working for RC. I'm going to integrate that in, in the NOLA, right, in New Orleans. Um, it is a, a beautiful storm. It did just enough damage from home up to, to knock off your roof and not knock down your building. Ooh, so that's so a roofer, sexy. That's a roofer's dream, right? A there. wet dream, boy. You don't want to go in there and build people's houses. You'll be there for months and months and months. And, and in there that's, a toasties. that's a real project manager. You know, you just want to manage a roof gutters. You want to be a fake project manager. You just want to do roof gutters, maybe some drywall, and get on down the road. That's where the big money is. Get on down the road. You know, build, sell, collect, move on. And so I've chosen that, you know, the, the northern half of the, of, of the city because it was just roofs, you know, a lot of just roofs. And uh, man, those houses are big, and there's a lot of them. You know, I probably, I, I'd guarantee, and I can guarantee this with some 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 bass in my voice. I guarantee ten million out of this storm. Oh, personally, God, that's personally, beautiful. you got in there with some of the locals, huh? Yeah, yeah, we got. I got a police force. Um, we've already sold about nine jobs to this guy. This and this. Particular, the cops love you. The cops love you. Oh my God! I'm like Oxy, boy, I'm telling him to look up my history now, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, as long as you don't look, check out background check, we're straight. Um, <laughs> Little Wayne's relatives love you. Yeah, so we're doing uh, Miss Carter, Miss Carter, uh, Little Wayne's mom and aunt, and his brother. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah. We're doing a couple uh, football players too uh, in the same neighborhood. Oh, yeah. nice. So, um, you know, also I think one of the things that everybody needs to understand is um, there's bad days where you're unmotivated, where you're dealing with shit. There's drama that you had to deal with with customers. There's drama you had to deal with with corporate. There's drama you had to deal with with me. What's the common ingredient about you when you're even having a bad day? How do you stay driven? Um, grind. I'm a dog. I love it. I'm a dog. Ooh, ooh, you ooh. know, and, and the people that run in my circle, you're either a dog or you're gone. Ooh. That's it. You're either going to get up when I get up, and you're going to go to bed when I go to bed, or you're not living in this house. That's how it is. And people don't either can deal with it or they can't. You know, that's what's got me into a little drama at RSCA. Either you're going to deal with it or not, you know, and I don't shy away from it. I just am who I am, and it's in your face a little bit. It's kind of a... a I am know. whatever you say I am. I think I know somebody like that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's like, it's, <laughs> you, you and I are a lot alike. And so that means that you've been fired, rehired. We've give each other hugs. We've been in each other's throats. But, you know, we still haven't rolled in jujitsu. I know, man. And I'm ready for you. I got to get there. God, I'm, I'm too big for you right now. I'm going to put you to I, sleep. I'm going to armbar your ass. Save a little bit more of these pounds, oh, man. I'm God, coming there. I can't there. wait, Jeremy. I'm going to fucking armbar your ass. Oh, come on. Oh, listen up, guys. Uh, this guy's one of the best roofing salesmen I've ever seen. And um, it's a lot of all these intangibles he talks about. Um, customer care is a really how much he cares about doing what he says he's going to do. Um, the willingness to be very precise about follow-up and that if you don't close them the first day, complete the offer, go the second day. And maybe after that day, you don't have to push as much. But I mean, the reality is, is um, it's really the consistent drive. It's the fact that you get to four kitchen tables a day. It's the fact that you complete four five kitchen uh, offers a night. The fact that when you do what you say you're going to do, the customers give you referrals and you just keep running. And I think that the fact that you're willing to work with the team, split the jobs, um, all those things are great. Now, two different parts of the system that once you start doing these other parts, it'll be even better. You know, mastering the marketing method and getting more leads that don't just come through door to door and word of mouth. Doing more direct mail and digital marketing on top of your campaigns. The other thing is, using those same strategies, but specifically targeting commercial and high-end residential to go along with your volume. 20 million, you could do 
as one sells team easily, twenty million dollars. Yeah. So when I say those numbers, even that seven million that I talked about earlier, that was what I wanted to get to by the end of the year, which is doable. I got some jobs coming in that will make that happen. Turned in, I've turned in consistently a hundred thousand dollars a week for, I, for God knows how many weeks. I mean, every single week. So that's it's doable. I do that at a clip of twenty seven thousand at a time. So I don't have a lot. I do have some big jobs, but I'll sell you a twelve thousand dollar roof just the same as I'll sell you a hundred twenty thousand dollar roof. I don't discriminate. I want well, your one business. Of the, one of the inside sales departments, you know, because a lot of times you, the leads are, we get Facebook leads are small houses. Yeah. So we've been having an inside sales center turn the leads into a virtual uh, home inspection where they get a sumo quote, uh, pictures, they get a contingency agreement online, and they signed a lady up. Well, that lady ended up having a commercial building. And yep. it and it ended up being a mega job. I think it's going to end up being a million-dollar commercial roof along with like a little $12,000 roof. Mm-hmm. So $12,000 roofs. Yeah. They got big roofs, too. I'll tell you a good story about that. So I was in New Orleans. It was in actually uh, Metairie. And uh, I was knocking a decently-sized neighborhood, you know, probably 50 to 80 square. And uh, knocked the door. It was a big old tile roof. It's, I think the estimate was 336000 And Indian couple, very nice, sweet lady. And she was like, I, you know, I give the pitch. Hey, I'm from South Naples. I know more about these tile roofs than anybody around here. There's a reason why half of it blew off. I'm going to give you a good roofing system that's not going to blow off next time. And I say that with conviction because that's the truth. They don't not even, about what you say. It's how you say it. That's a they good don't lesson. even mortar set the ridges, man. Come yeah. on. Come on. And uh, so, you know, after our conversation, after our inspection, after, you know, she, she can't wait to work with us, she goes, hey, by the way, could you stop by my, my, uh, my business? I'm thinking, yeah, she's got some little market, little, you know. So she gives me the address. I, I head over there. I pull up. I park in front of this thing. Uh, it's a 10,000 square foot warehouse. Damn. It had more leaks than... 10,000 square, not 10,000 square feet. I'm sorry, 10,000 square. Yeah, 10,000 square. square. Multiple city blocks. It was so big, I couldn't get it in a picture. I had to take a video. And we've already done the uh, uh, remediation on it. We've already got locked in. We're going to get that job. It's it's coming through. It'll be the biggest job of your career. And you're only one big job like that away. And a lot of times those jobs, I have jobs from Sally like that, multiple $5 million jobs. They're about to pop in the next three to six months, hopefully next three months. But they they're they haven't even getting first checks from the insurance companies. And they're they're obvious clear damage claims on the multi million dollar claims, sometimes they take time. Uh, you gotta trust the process, you gotta have faith. But you know, it was Jeremy coming into our culture, he wanted to rise to the top. He saw other people making it and he said, if they could do it, I could do it, I could do it better. And then seeing all the resources available, if I could do me, these guys can help me do me and Honestly, what do you think your percentage, average percentage you make as a salesperson on your six million? What percentage? So I've got it kind of down to a science. After splitting everything, I'm about fifteen percent each million I sell. Okay. So I make one hundred fifty grand every million I sell. Okay. You know. And so a lot of people, I'm gonna be honest with you, as a business owner, it's very hard for me to consistently make fifteen percent net margin as I'm trying to double and triple every year. Yeah. You know. So I just I'm in reinvesting in the business, and I'm not always. In those same margins, a lot of oftentimes salespeople are making more, and my true overhead expense is even more than the overhead expense of what it costs. But you see the improvement of the company. What do you think about uh, when you first came on versus now? Well, I'll tell you something about what you just said is I've always owned my own company. Even with a college degree, a bachelor from a great business school in Indiana, uh, I've never had more money in my bank account than I did working for you. Owning your own company, you never know how much money you got because it goes back into the company. If you want to keep building your business, you keep putting the money back in it. So you really don't know, ever really know how much money you make until it's all done and over and everything catches up. So thank you for that. You know, my wife's happy. She she just put her two weeks notice in. Oh my God, she's quitting. So I'm happy to Dang, you know be you able to do that for my wife and kid for my relief. wife. Yeah, nice. so she can raise the kids while I'm gone a lot. Nice. You know? So I want, thank I'm, you for I'm that. jealous that I'm not on that team. That Jeremy's kid's on the number one baseball team in America, and they invited Harlan to play. Yes. And, uh, you know, he's like the num- best kid in the whole league. Yeah. But no one's really pushing him like – I mean, the, they push him. He loves it. But I would love for him to have to compete. <laughs> man, I told you. I tried to get you in that. It's a commitment, man. I, I mean – How much time does that take? So he practices on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh-huh. in Cape Coral. Uh-huh. But every kid on the team, including Cooper, has a batting coach, a uh, pitching coach. Cooper has a catching coach because he's a catcher. So three days a week he's practicing on his own, getting lessons. You know how that is. Mm-hmm. It's not cheap. You know, it's, it's time-consuming. 
So five days a week, he's and then we have tournaments on the weekends, if not one to three tournaments a week a month, and they're not here. They're they're you know on the East Coast. They're in Sarasota. They're in Tampa. But I tell you what, this is the most exciting thing I like to do in my time off work is watch these kids play baseball. I mean, you're, it's like you're watching little little major leaguers. Yeah, they're turning cool. double plays. They're hitting dingers at seven and eight years old, and it's pretty dang cool. They're number one in the nation. Look them up. They're the Cape Coral Crush. We'll put a link in the bio. They, uh, they got their little website going. and uh, Well, I mean, that's what it's all about. American Dream is about being able to do exactly what you said. You know, achieve your dreams, have a better quality of life. Um, yeah, with success comes new responsibility. There can be hiccups. But, you know, you've grown a lot. Your family, when you make a little bit, you don't have so much to stress about. It's easier to be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm still putting on that front end energy. That's that, you know, that time away from home. I'm still there. But, you know, me and my wife have, have talked about it. And we're willing to make that sacrifice for a certain amount of time. Uh, you know, I want to I want to make a bunch of money and not have to do it as hard anymore. Mm. You know, whether that's, uh, you know, running things for you here or maybe, you know, running my own thing here. Who knows? Mm. This is down the road, you know. Um, but I tell you what. Um, I want you to talk to two different people here in the audience. First of all, I want you to talk to um, roofing salespeople that want to have their first multi-million dollar year. What are like, what are the, what's your most important tip for them? If you got some, whether you either have experience or not in roofing, it doesn't matter. I, I became RRC's number one salesman, top, top cap out in a matter of 12 months, pure on working harder than everybody else. I didn't know more. I'd never been on a roof before in my life. I just did it on outworking you, you know, and learning learning from somebody else and applying it to, to, the, to the game, learning the game, staying up at night. You know, the, the day's not over when you come home. You still got estimates to write. You still got photo reports to edit. I'm putting all that energy and time and and, and the dog in me, putting that in there. So at the, when I know this business for the back, the back of my hand, like some of you old roofers do, I'll put it on cruise control. You know, like you said, the, the, you, you've gotten the gift to be able to stay home more with your family. I'm going to get there. I'm just not quite there yet. Well, 17 years. I mean, yeah, you're, you're on yeah. a path where you could get there way faster than me. Right. And if you stick with the company, we're going to be able to fit the role. The most important thing for you is I want to have you align with the core values all along the way with uh, the integrity, the excellence, the speed, the security, the trust. And, you know, I would trust my kid to spend the night or go play baseball or, you know, and I trust you to take care of my customers, you know, so I've got a hothead temper too. So I got to I got to remember, hey, I don't want to do anything that puts me on the front cover of Wikipedia. And I could wick one one move away from Wikipedia in my life to you know. Yeah. Seriously. Mm -hmm. And with the more success, guess what? The bigger the target, the more people will go out there and try and find you. So look, there's no other choice. We live in a transparent world. And it isn't it a lot more fun this way? It is. Yeah. I mean, you know, I like as much as I don't like the I like the pirateness of the roofing industry. I like being the, the, the pirate out there, you know, making my own money, making my own path. But I do like the, the structure that I get with RRCA. It, it holds me to a, a certain set of standards. And uh, <laughs> they're, they're, I got Miss Desiree on my butt all the time. No, you know see, how that is, right? See, look, if I didn't have my dad on my butt, I would have made a lot of mistakes along the way as a pirate. And he always kind of helped me have a higher level of value that was respect for my last name and that I wouldn't do anything to disrespect my grandma or whatever. You know, the whole point was I wasn't out there being a renegade like a lot of these other guys slabbing money here and there. Never, you know, being responsible for the end dollar amount is really what it comes right. down to. Exactly. Every penny matters. Every penny matters. And so once I take money, it, and this is why it's funny people call us Ponzi schemes, is we've stood behind every promise, every job. You've seen a lot of these knuckleheads on the internet. And I mean, it's just like, I guess because there's a lot of bad apples, they think everybody's a bad apple. I mean, I built 567 jobs in two and a half years. I have 567 customers saved in my phone, every single one of them. And any one of them could call me at any time, and I would either answer the phone or call them back in a damn hurry. And I think that is something that has to go with hand in hand with anybody that works at RSCA. If you don't answer your phone, you get gone real quick around There's here. There's a lot of people that are okay at getting the contract signed, but terrible at answering the phone. Terrible no, at you can't do that in this business. And you they might think, be able to get away with that somewhere. They think they're good roofing salesmen. No. It's integrity. Answer your phone. A lot of people just want to know what the next step is. So Jeremy made a point. He's like, so just because I called somebody a pussy, I don't have integrity. <laughs> and I said, well, Jeremy, you got to understand who you did it and how you did it. And you can't be calling. 
then I started thinking about it. Hell, my grandma called my friends pussies. And you know what? It Look, here's the thing. You know, both of us get in trouble for being a little bit too candid, a little bit too passionate. But the integrity that I see is that. I know that you have the customer's numbers that you're able to follow up, that you have 500. If you only have five bad problems or 10 bad problems out of 567, it's really not that big a number. And people need to recognize that, you know, because I've heard other complaints. Well, some of Jeremy's jobs aren't as high a margin. Well, here's the deal. So much volume, so much momentum for the company, and then your essentially energy heartbeat, it represents great things for roofing sales, roofing salespeople. But number one thing is there's just rules. You can't take from the business without, you know, being a part of the business. And so those lines have to be drawn clearly. And if the path that you need to try your own company again is okay with me, that's fine. Go start your own company. But but you have to be clear, transparent. You have to come to me. You have to do it appropriately outside of the markets that we already have arrangements in. And, you know, if you do it in Florida and you want to do it the right way, I'll show you how to do it. But, you know, the number one thing is I'm grateful that you've been um, an example of our core values. And I do think that you have integrity. And I do think that you are an example of our core values. And I have stood up for you. And I hope that, um, you know, people that are watching this, look, top salespeople, top performers, they're a different breed. You, you, better be know, you better know how to handle one when you get one. Because, I mean, if you were working for a chump, what, what's the number one reason to leave a company? Not getting paid. Not getting paid or you fire your boss. If you're a better leader than the boss, like if, if you were a better leader than me and there was no leadership value out of the example I set or what I could teach you or the system that you were able to – because you could learn the marketing. You can learn the commercial. You can also, dude, step into leadership and dupl- create that as a different revenue stream. You, you had opportunities to do that. The only things that got in the way were ego things. Aggression things, passion things, those, those can be fixed. Mm-hmm. You just have to understand, you know, um, as long as you're living off of those core values, then you're family. Yeah, I feel like family here. And that's one thing if you're looking to come on board, whether you're a current roofing salesman or, or I'll tell you a good uh, market that should come thinking about swapping sides is the car, car sales guys. I've seen car dealerships that have five cars in a lot, brand new dealerships because they're having a problem keeping inventory in or the chips or everything's too expensive. Come over here, make some real money in an in a industry that's limitless, that's recession proof, that we don't slow down ever. There's no, nothing stopping this insurance industry. We are full fledged ahead. There's a reason why all these venture capitalists are wanting to buy all of our companies out because they see the value. They see the potential. It's pandemic proof. We're essential. Pandemic it's recession proof. proof. It's insurance and storms and global warming. Rooftops, buddy, let me tell you something. There was a huge building boom in 2008, and we're roofing the shit out of it right now. There's also a building boom going on. That's future work for And the modern-day gold rush is in home service. Uh, most expensive thing just about on a home is a roof. It's easy to duplicate, and that's why, you know, you got to pay attention to this. It's not we do the roofs. We sell the roofs, and we fix big problems for big paychecks. And if you're interested in joining me, go to www.joinleehate.com. Make sure you... Hit the notification, subscribe below. And, uh, man, Jeremy, thanks for have, uh, being on the show, brother. I always appreciate leave. you being top guy at our RCA. And I'm, a, I'm a bull in a china shop. You know, that's why you describe me. And that's I might not ever be away from that, but I will bring a certain amount of integrity, and I'm never going to slow down. You know, that's one thing you can – and I'm loyal. There's three things that you can take to the bank. Hey, well, I'll pick up after you, all right? Someone picked up after me. <laughs>